Hey guys, it's Max. In this video, we're gonna be comparing the color science of Sony mirrorless cameras compared to Fuji mirrorless cameras. Now, I wanna do this test a little bit different. I don't wanna just look at shots side by side and tell you which one I think is best because everybody has their own biases. If you guys have been following along, I love Fuji cameras, I love them, but I do most of my work with Sony mirrorless cameras. So because of this, I'm gonna have 10 shots side by side labeled A and B, and I want you to get out a piece of paper, a notepad, your phone, or whatever you wanna use, and write down for shot one, do you like A or B better? For shot two, A or B, all the way to shot 10, and then let me know which one scored how many. Be completely honest, I wanna see your opinion without knowing which brand is which. Now uh, with these cameras, these are both actually the latest cameras from each brand, the X-T30 versus the A6400. Fuji's been known to have great color science both in stills and video, whereas Sony has been known to not have great color science, but they have been making small improvements over the years with each model they tweak a little bit better, make it slightly less realistic, which is what their original goal was, and slightly more pleasing to the eye. So we're gonna see the latest and greatest from both these cameras. Let's jump into our first four examples. This is just a standard out of the box picture profiles. You just got the camera, you haven't tweaked anything. Now here uh, for white balance, I'm either using sunny or shade. So I'm not tweaking and putting anything custom, just like a regular person would end up using. And I tried my best to get the exposures as close as possible. In some cases, I actually shot a few uh, exposures with each camera and I matched the exposures properly. Now for the remaining six shots, I used the Eterna picture profile with the Fujifilm. It's labeled as soft color and rich shadow tone suitable for film look movie. This is a very popular profile. I really like it. A lot of other reviewers, a lot of other filmmakers really like this profile. And for the Sony, since they don't have nice names for the profiles, and with this one, I used my custom picture profile that I really like. It's very easy to set up picture profile six, but I actually punch up the contrast and the saturation. Now everybody has their own preferences. Personally, I like a little bit more saturation and contrast, and that's what I suggest to people in my Fujifilm camera reviews, just to bump up the contrast saturation. And on the Sony, I do the same thing either in post or in the profile, I actually go to a minus 10 and plus 10 to give it a little bit more pop. But for this comparison, I'm just gonna leave it as is. So we're gonna have just a regular Eterna here, and here we have picture profile six with negative five on the contrast or the blacks, and then plus five on the saturation. Alright guys, so I want you to go ahead and let me know down in the comment section below how many times did you vote for camera A and how many times did you vote for camera B? Let me know down below, pause the video before I tell you which camera is which because I want to hear your honest opinions on what your eyes prefer, not the brand uh, or whatever you would normally choose. Now is the time I'm going to reveal the cameras. If you didn't let me know down in the comments yet, please pause the video and go do that. Camera A is Sony and camera B is the Fuji film. So you can go ahead and reply to your comments and let me know if you were surprised by the result or if you guessed it all along and why. I'd love to hear you guys 
guys' opinions. Now, I'm also gonna give you guys my opinion and some of the things that kind of jump out, uh, jumped out and stuck out to me and some of the observations I had. Uh, but before that, I don't have a sponsor for this video, but I do wanna give a shout out to Soundstripe. I use their music in this video and all of my other videos for the last probably two or close to three years now. And I used to pay you know, close to a hundred bucks just for two songs, one-time use, non-commercial. And I pay about that now for a whole year of unlimited downloads, as much songs that I want, royalty-free, even for commercial use. So Soundstripe has a huge library and they have playlists that make it very easy to find the right music. And it's just super easy to use and very, very affordable. So if you do vlogs, YouTube videos, you do commercial films, you do freelance work, you just do editing, it's such a great resource. Go ahead and check out the link down in the description below and uh, that helps support the channel if you guys sign up through that link and I highly recommend Soundstripe. Let's go ahead and take a look at the shots together. Here in the first one, it's very interesting that um, the, the Fuji kind of takes those highlights and it brings them down and it's not blowing them out, but it looks flatter than the Sony. As far as colors, the Sony might be a little bit oversaturated compared to reality, but I just, I like that. I like a little bit of pop here. So I would go for the Sony. Now, the second shot over here, um, uh, ignoring the extra sharpness and maybe a little bit of artifacting in the Sony compared to the, the Fuji. The Fuji is shooting at 200 megabit per second instead of 100. Personally, oh, this is a hard one. <laughs> maybe somewhere in the middle it would be good. I guess the Sony looks more true to life. I guess I could say that. The Fuji looks more filmish, if you want to say that, even though they both have saturation and contrast. Jumping into the third shot here, um, I prefer the Sony, even though it does have a little bit of green cast to my eye, um, there was a lot of foliage and a lot of harsh sunlight, so uh, you're getting reflections of green, whereas the Fuji kind of tones that down. The Sony has a little bit more punch as far as um, the saturation, and the skin is a little bit brighter, so I like that. So if I was choosing between the two, for this one, I would choose the Sony, and going to our fourth and last shot with standard picture profiles, here I would absolutely prefer the Fuji. The Sony looks more true to life because we had a lot of reflections from the foliage. So you have this kind of like a tint on her face, whereas the Fuji film, it almost gets rid of all of that. Uh, the skin tone looks so pleasing. Uh, it, it does look a little bit flat, and I noticed that throughout these shots where the way it pulls down the highlights, it gets rid of some of the, the shadowing in the face, whereas the Sony kind of maintains that more, and I like that about the Sony, but you have that kind of color cast. This is without a doubt, uh, I would choose the Fuji film. Now let's jump into our custom profile. So we have Eterna here, and I have my picture profile six with the Sony. With this foliage, of course, we have more green in the Sony, even though the Fuji actually has a little bit more saturation in the background, and I like the Sony better. Jumping into the second scene here where we have um, kind of the river here, I also prefer the Sony, just a little bit more pops in the green. And here we have, once again, my daughters here. It's, it's hard to say. <laughs> I like the shadowing in the face and how it's handling the highlights and maintaining some of those highlight details better on the Sony, whereas the Fuji looks kind of flat. I would have to say the Fuji film. I would choose the Fuji here. And uh, here's this shot here with Elon. You have a lot of tint in the, in the Sony from the reflections. And the Fuji, that part of it is missing. I would give the colors to the Fuji once again. And this is in the Eterna profile. And then moving on to our next test. This one I would choose the Sony. We don't have as much reflections. And the Fuji, the face, especially those highlights, and looking at his shirt, I mean, I know the color of that shirt and it definitely looks the way it does with the Sony um, and I prefer that one. We have Elon here swinging around. I guess it's basically the same result. Uh, I prefer uh, the Fujifilm overall. I like the way the Sony deals with, with the, I guess, exposure and the highlights, but I like the color of the Fujifilm better. All right guys, so there we have it. Fuji versus Sony color science comparison. I am very excited to hear your guys' opinions, which one you chose more often and which one you prefer and why. If you haven't commented yet, please comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Personally, I was about half and half. Uh, for scenery, I really like the Sony. For skin tones, um, in a lot of the cases, I in some of the cases, I guess I should say, I prefer the Sony. In other cases, especially where we had that harsh sunlight, 
light bouncing off of grass, bouncing off of foliage, just the tint in the face on the Sony was too much. And surprisingly, somehow in both profiles, Fuji uh, just got rid of that. It's almost like there's some smart, something smart, I guess smart color science behind it where it knows, hey, that is not normal, get rid of that. So that is impressive. If you're shooting in those situations, man, the Fuji looks great. Um, I do wish the exposure and kind of the way it deals with the midtones and the highlights was a little bit different. I prefer the Sony, especially in the picture profile six, much better, um, but with the Sony, it is more accurate in some cases, but you will have to spend more time getting rid of some of those tints. In some cases, especially if you're using auto white balance, getting rid of magenta. In other cases, getting rid of green. Whereas with the, the Fujifilm, you don't have to worry about that. They got it covered, they got it figured out. If you just wanna shoot and not spend time color grading, this guy is great. Of course, the Sony has dynamic range improvements over the Fujifilm, it has some other uh, benefits, but out of the box, if we're just looking at color science, the Fuji definitely has it going on. So there we have it, guys. Thank you for watching. Once again, check out Soundstripe. Uh, if you guys need some music, it is so affordable. Uh, you can use it unlimited for anything you want. They have a ton of great songs, and uh, I would highly, highly recommend them. Check out the link down in the video description below. This has been Max, and I will see you guys in the next video.